It's no picture, sorry. Oh, oh, I'm recording. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. All right, hello, everybody. Woo! Hello! hello. 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 All right, well, welcome to the inaugural PPCM Awareness Event, uh, where we're trying to bring awareness to peripartum cardiomyopathy, okay? Peripartum cardiomyopathy is um, for PPCM for short, which is what we're representing. Let's talk PPCM. Uh, it's peripartum cardiomyopathy. Uh, it's actually an unrecognized and misdiagnosed type of heart failure uh, that affects pregnant women. Uh, and leading up to um, 12 months postpartum. They originally had it at six months postpartum, but with um, me actually starting the organization and I started collecting stories uh, on these mothers and we had began to notice that some of these women are actually being diagnosed a year later. Um, you know, so their heart function is actually decreasing over time and they don't know. Um, and so this is a very, it can be a very tragic condition as uh, we, uh, my family went through um, a tragedy ourselves. I lost my sister to PPCM uh, in 2014. We didn't know what had happened to her. We didn't know, um, you know, what caused her heart to fail. Uh, she was 27 years old at the time and she had only, uh, it was after her second child. Um, they let us know that there was nothing else that they could do for her um, after she got to a severe uh, into a severity of heart failure she needed a heart transplant um, and unfortunately the heart transplant did not make it to uh, her in time so um, they actually just diagnosed her as a natural cause death even though she was 27 years old so um, three years later I end up going through the exact same condition that took my sister's life. Now, this condition was not inherited. I was told that this is not an inherited condition, that this condition was a genetic disorder, okay? So a genetic disorder, meaning any mother, woman, any woman could be carrying this genetic, this, this, this genetic trait, okay? So what we're trying to do is um, actually get mandated BNP blood testing um for mothers um either new moms or postpartum women uh mothers in postpartum sorry uh or mothers that are expecting because they need to know where their levels are at as um you know originally so if you know your bnp blood level which is uh the blood test that we're using to check the protein uh the levels in the blood to see if a woman is actually developing ppcm uh, it's really kind of the one way that we can uh, find out. Hello. So, we thank y'all for being here, being able to learn and spread awareness. We thank all the vendors for being here, all the guests and the volunteers. We thank y'all. We appreciate y'all so much. And I just, it's a blessing. I'm holding back my tears. Trust me. It'll be probably some shed later. Um, but right now, I did want to open us up with a quick prayer. Uh, I would like to introduce you guys to Miss Letha Green, and she is going to open us up a little bit on our prayers. Father God, we was just want to thank you today. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall be glad and rejoice in it. Father, we bless your holy name, Father. We ask you to bless those that are on the way, Father God. We ask you to open up the ears, oh God. We thank you for this joyous time, this joyous day that you will make us aware of everything that we need to be aware of, Father God. And we ask that you surround us, Father God, with your angels, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I ask you right now to touch any heart, every heart, Father God. Touch a mind, touch a body, touch a soul, Father. Release deliverance, Father God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you today, oh God, for this blessed day. Lord, we ask you to touch, Father God, all, all the, uh, the people that come today, Father. Everybody that's here today together, Father God, for this, this joyous time. This time to learn. This time to gather. This time to, to be aware. This time to be alert. 
Father God, and we thank you. And I ask you to bless us today. And I ask you in Jesus' name, and I thank you, Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, so much. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. All right. And so um, what we did want to bring attention to you guys uh, was that in the community where we feel like, you know, being able to bring the awareness to the community, uh, be able to definitely help a lot, help mothers kind of be more educated on uh, this rare condition. It's known as rare. They're going to continue to call it rare until they see more deaths. OK, I hate to say that, but that is exactly what they're waiting on. They're waiting to see how many more mothers are going to die. And we don't want that, so we're going to try to prevent that. So what we're doing, and let's talk to BCM, we are actually, uh, we created a service, so we created the screening tool. So the screening tool is new, it's never been seen on other, you know, health care professionals, okay? So we're trying to introduce that to them and to the hospitals uh, to get them on board with being more educated on this condition as I am continuing to, uh, continuing to see uh, mothers being diagnosed with PPCM. I'm literally on there searching for mothers who are diagnosed with PPCM, at least the ones that are able to share. A lot of mothers who go through this are not able to share and not able to get up here and stress that um, their awareness or their opinion on how it affects them. Um, and that is, um, you know, a big part. So being able to raise our voices, you know, uh, I did see that a lot, that a lot of women were afraid to speak up on this and they also felt like they weren't cared about when they either talked about it or you know brought it to attention or maybe if they was going through certain symptoms even mothers today that are aware of ppcm they go and ask their obstetrician hey i heard about this condition i would like a bnp blood test and the obstetrician to say oh you're too young you know for to have any heart problems okay well if if they're too young, I didn't have any health issues. My sister didn't have any health issues. She died at 27, six months after giving birth. Me, three years later, I'm 23. I was 23 at the time. You know, I'm 28 now, hey. But I was 23 at the time when I went into heart failure. I was younger than my sister. Um, and it, it dates, my cardiologist was kind of explaining. He said my heart was, uh, at 23, he said it was beating like, the, uh, like I was an 80 year old. You know, and so we walking around, I'm a new mom at this time, you know, um, how, how was I supposed to take this? You know, my cardiologist let me know that if I stressed, if I was, became depressed, you know, if I went through anything that could basically take my heart muscle on out, you know, um, that that's what I was heading towards. Now, another thing that we want to bring attention to is the fact that women wait, we wait, and especially us African American women, we like to wait and we like to pray it away, okay? Um, that is exactly what I tried to do because I was I, I was raised on prayer and my beautiful grandmother back there, hey, Granny, so yes, that's the minister right there. And so, um, you know, she's uh, definitely keep, keep our family lifted, you know, when it comes to anything, you know, especially health issues that happened to me, unfortunately, um, but we was glad to be able to catch it in enough time to be able to find out that there was preventative uh, measures that could have been taken for my sister's sake. So now we have created that when, when mothers um, are become pregnant, once they get about 36 weeks, uh, that's when uh, we had actually partnered with La Lure Health and Woo! Wellness. So we have Miss Tammy right here. Uh, yes, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and so Miss Tammy, um, actually, when we, when we got together, we met. Uh, how we met, it was. It was just, it was God, you know, and how we met and how we got together. She saw the vision that I was trying to bring and in, into the community. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, she saw the vision that I had and the vision was if something could have saved my sister, I think this would be it. Um, I honestly think if she had, you know, a BMP blood test or, you know, the free postpartum exam, whatever, you know, that could have kept her here with her kids, you know, she was married. Um, so it was just a very uh, heartbreak, it's still heartbreaking um, just doing this and that you guys, you know, caring to come out here just to listen to what we have to say. But a part of that, it's been a journey. I've been on this journey. Thank you. 
I've been on this journey for about four years, about four and a half years now, and just advocating. Uh, if it wasn't for my nurses actually at Baylor, I wouldn't be doing this. They thought that it was a remarkable story, the fact that my sister had died of a condition that they saved me from. And it was, it was a bittersweet situation because I didn't know how to take that, you know. Um, it definitely was a survival guilt situation that I had to go through and that I went through. But I knew that God was using it for something. And so he brought me this far and my heart had recovered within two years and I didn't think that that could happen um you know we're watching my sister and how things went so tragically for her watching her suffer literally walking around her home with an IV therapy she could no longer go upstairs in her home you know so it was just um it was very tragic for her you know and I hate that she had to go like that because she didn't deserve it. She was a beautiful person. She was a very, very kind person and she cared about everybody. Um, so I just feel like being able to bring this special service for free for mothers. You know, some people call the service cheap or whatever. If you hear that, don't, oh my God, ignore that. We're trying to save lives here, okay? And if we're able to prevent a mother from having to pay from that extra service just to make sure that her heart is okay after sustaining pregnancy, even if she's told that she's too young to have heart problems, this, this condition can affect mothers who have no health condition. Me and my sister had no health, we had no health scares. The only thing the doctor told us to be aware of was breast cancer because our mother died from breast cancer in 2006. So that was the only thing that we thought to be aware of. Nobody ever said, oh, watch out from a pregnancy induced heart failure that may happen, you know, to any woman. So we're out here to do that. And I want Miss Tammy to be able to kind of elaborate on the medical terms of what we're doing. I feel like she can best explain. So I'm gonna give her the mic. Thank you all. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Miss Brianna, for um, your vision and your insight. Um, when I met Brianna, uh, I was supposed to go through grant writing services. And when I found out about her story, it was the reason why, it was the reason why that I created Lumen Diagnostic Services and its subsidiary, La Lore Health and Wellness. I felt like we were not being heard. And when I say we, I mean women of color. I mean, we often hold in so many things because we are expected to do it all. And when we can't do it all, we have to live up to that narrative of the strong black woman, right? But that's extremely damaging in our community because when we need help, we don't ask for help. And we are often unheard. And we often keep going because that is what we are expected to do. Keep going, keep going, keep going until our cup literally runneth clean. There's nothing else. And then you know what we do? We keep pushing some more and we gather what has fallen onto the floor to fill up that cup some more. But I'm here to tell you that we have a voice and we have a chance to change the trajectory of our health care. And what it does, we have to be an active participant of our health care. We cannot change what we don't name. Its name is PPCM. I partnered with Brianna because I believe in her vision and I want to help to save lives. If we have to have these events so that you understand the severity when you're having a birth, when you're supposed to be giving life, you're not supposed to be making plans to end your own. How have we gotten to a place where we're making arrangements for our death when life is supposed to come into play? That makes no sense, but that's often a reality for women of color. And it needs to stop. I'm tired. So what I have done, I've created less, um, less no, I did not create that. It's already been created. But I've created La Lore Health and Wellness. And what we do, we do blood tests. And what we do for Brianna is we do free health screenings because you cannot change what you don't name. And we hope to give it a name. The more information that I have is the more information that we can use to change PPCM and the mortality rates that happen with women of color. The thing is, is when we go into a healthcare system, 
there are minute things that happen which I've learned to deal or term them as implicit biases. We all have them. They're stereotypes, they're racism or whatever. There's the conditioning that we have been thought of that we just keep going. But I'm here to tell you that that conditioning is damaging. It's the conditioning that we tell our girls, little girls are seen but not heard. That conditioning is extremely damaging because why we condition these girls to grow up and they don't have a voice. So when they go to healthcare, when a, uh, when a, a healthcare worker is around them, what do they do? They clam up. And what do they say? They say, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We've conditioned them to not even say no or to even advocate for themselves in healthcare. How did we even get here? It's time to get our voice back. Let us screen you appropriately. Let's get some blood measures done. Let's get some blood tests done so that we can understand your levels. The BNP testing that we're trying to do is to try to get serial BNPs because we want to know at the beginning part of your pregnancy, what is your heart doing? What are those levels looking like? BNP stands for brain naturopathic peptide. It's a hormone or a peptide that's released by the heart. And if there is damage to the heart or the heart vessels, it tends to be increased. But I want to know what your personal trend is. I want to see if you're going up, if you're step plateauing, or if you're going down. But the only way that I know is if we, uh, we assess it. We cannot change what we don't name. So my mission is, is that we need to go ahead and get these BNP testing done in the beginning of pregnancy, in the middle of pregnancy, right before you have that baby, and then postpartum. If we can see what that trend looks like, then we can know, you know what, you're okay. And we can say that confidently. Upon doing my research, I found out in the postpartum period, we are most likely to die from a cardiac-related death. Black women are three to four times more likely to die from a cardiac-related death. Like, does that even make sense? Not even just cardiac-related, but death during pregnancy and beyond. How does that make sense? The math just ain't math. Because they also tell us that death caused by pregnancy or postpartum period are preventable. That's what ACOG said. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has said that deaths caused by pregnancy or postpartum are preventable. But yet black women or women of color are three to four times more likely to die from a cardiac related death or just death in general from giving birth make it make sense the problem is it doesn't and unless we advocate for ourselves and teach our girls to start advocating for themselves in a respectable beautiful way i don't believe that we were trying to harm our children when we have this authoritarian parenting style when we tell them how to mind and tell them to be quiet and tell them to say yes ma'am when peak figures of authority i don't think we were trying to hurt them i think we were trying to save our children but unfortunately, we can't do that any longer. There is a fine line that we have to walk. It's being black people, being people of color. There is a fine line, but I'm here to tell you, we can eloquently say these things that hurt us in a way that demands respect and authority. If it can happen to Serena Williams, they used to tell us, right, that when you are, um, the adverse healthcare outcomes happen because of low socioeconomic status. Well, I'm here to tell you that's something that's funny because with Serena Williams, she transcended that socio, low socioeconomic status, right? She has the money, she has the affluence, and she has the providers and the access to care. However, her story when she was giving birth, guess what? For a known medical history of blood clots, when she felt that her body was telling her something, they told her, no girl, you, you're a little anxious. You just had a baby, just relax. And she said, no, I don't feel right. Something is wrong. No, you're fine. She had to activate and advocate for herself when she was clearly sick for a known medical history. Make it make sense. It doesn't. And finally, they were like, they obliged. And they said, you know, let's go ahead and do the scan for me. You know, let's just do it. She had a blood clot that could have killed her from giving birth to her baby. It transcends what we think it needs to. It transcends your socioeconomic status. I'm here to tell you it's because of your color. It's because of your color that people have implicit biases because why black women are strong. It's damaging. Because if we are strong, you're expecting us to just perform. And you're not listening when I'm telling you that I need help. Listen to me. I'm challenging every single one of you to become an active participant of your healthcare.
This is your call to action. We cannot change what we don't name. It has a name. It's PPCM. I'm done. I'm getting the most. Of it. <laughs> Thank you, marvelous Miss Terry. Was, oh my goodness, we so needed that. I'm glad we got that. Okay, so y'all, it's serious. <clears throat> I done got myself together. Thank y'all for bearing <laughs> with me. It's a sensitive topic, um, but I, you'd be surprised. This is actually my first time sharing tears, um, and while I share this story, uh, you know, because. At the end of the day, I, I had to realize that I you could you, you could be used, you know, like for you know my godly people out there. Um, God had a way of using me that I, I didn't think, um, you know. I it, it's a it's a whole story, you know, behind it. I I wrote a book. It's called A Life on Pause. Some of y'all done got it already. So you know thinking about getting it and some of y'all are pretty much know about it but it's on Amazon if you type in a life on pause by Brianna Harris Henderson it will pop up you will be able to learn a lot about me my story my history uh, the family history uh, and how I got into actually uh, starting let's talk PPCM so another thing we ha wanted to be able to share some um, survivor speakers with you guys so if we're able to do that we'll have miss michelle, <laughs> michelle. you we'll have miss michelle you got this share a story you with got us this. you guys oh, wow. give her a hand oh, miss michelle. Wow. on the spot I wasn't expecting to speak <laughs> um, my story started um, probably towards the end of my pregnancy I got to well let me start from the beginning the beginning um, we had already lost one child um, about three months into my pregnancy I got pregnant the second uh, the following year and I suffered with hyper uh, nieces, I think it is. It was hospital a lot. Hyper uh, gravita. Yeah. Yes. I, I was hospitalized probably about the first three months of my pregnancy. So then I um, I got a cartilage uh, midway and was scheduled to have my C-section uh, beginning of August. The last week, I felt really, really anxious and wasn't really sleeping. My, I felt like my heart was racing and I couldn't lay flat. So when I went to my final visit, I did tell the doctor what I was feeling and basically she said I was anxious. Um, anxious to, you know, have the baby. Went in for my C-section. Uh, basically, they couldn't get my uh, blood pressure down, so I had to stay a, a few extra days. Went home, got sick, went back to the emergency room, and weeks later, about nine weeks later, uh, time for me to go back to work, and my feet were swollen, I was still probably getting in the tub, uh, just so I could feel better and not really sleep. I could barely walk or hold my baby, and went to my primary care doctor, because I thought that was my issue sent me over to one of the uh, places to go and have an ultrasound thought probably a blood clot and also thought uh, maybe it was um, thyroid being overactive she gave me medicine so that made my heart race even more and uh, come to find out I had fluid on my chest so after I had the uh, ultrasound I was on my way out going home the technician come running out telling me to come back in because he didn't want me to go home 
and uh, tried to get in touch with my primary care doctor. Man, never answered the phone. Never answered the phone, and he never did a follow-up call to check on me. I said, well, call my uh, gynecologist. I love my gynecologist. I miss Dr. McClure and moved back home. Um, and she uh, she said, go straight to the emergency room. Well, I didn't go straight to the emergency room. I wanted to go with my husband because I was kind of scared at that point. So I waited till he got off, and then we went straight to the emergency room. And that's when I found out that I was in heart failure and I had people see him. So my baby is going on 7th uh, in August. I, I'm doing much better. I can walk. I'm not, not much swelling. Uh, Sometimes I feel like my heart is racing, but other than that, I get my EKG, um, twi I think it's twice a year that he does it, and I've been fine, so um, he has no reason to up increase my medication or anything, so uh, it, it's been kind of scary, but I, I'm living through it, and I'm grateful to see uh, Brianna doing her work and being able to talk to other women that are going through what we went through. And there's so many different stories out there. And every time I see a pregnant person tell their story, I tell them to make sure you listen to your body. Yes. Listen to your body. That's what I, I tell my sister when she was pregnant and seeing other people's story. You have to listen to your body. That's the main thing that I got from all of this is to listen to my body. So, thank you. All right, y'all. Yeah, so thank you so much, my heart sister there. I have a lot of them, y'all. This is over thousands and thousands of us, okay? And we're grouped up, okay? We was isolated in a group because they told us it was rare. So we was living rare lives, you know? Not, not knowing we can live, we can live normal lives. I went and did a whole music video to show them I ain't playing. So, if you saw that, it went viral. Okay, it's in universities in Texas now. I was serious. So, I wanted to talk, let's talk to the CM, and that's what we're gonna do. Well, I rap it, sing it, speak it. Hey. That's what we're gonna do. Exit. Okay, text it. Okay, tag it. However, okay. Now we do have uh, more survivors. We're actually waiting um, on our initial survivors that are planning to be here. They had some kind of delays in travel, uh, so we're praying that they get here and being able to enjoy the event as well. Uh, I want to thank my heart sister Miss Michelle for being able to come up and uh, highlight her story as well. Um, all right, and so we do have uh, tech and barbecue over here. Um, you know, smoking up grills and stuff. And so, whenever you, yeah, whenever, whenever y'all, you guys uh, want to eat links, I think they got links, ribs, um, hot dogs, uh, turkey legs. Um, so yeah, we got some oh, pork chops. So y'all can get enjoy some barbecue over there. Uh, and then we have the Black Heart Association back here for screening. Hey, y'all hear me over there? Hey. So I guess y'all can go and get uh, screenings done over there. They actually have some screenings they're doing now. If you guys want to take a look at what they're doing, how they're doing. We have Faith, Hope, Love, and Scrubs over here. They grand opening is today. So woo! Actually, all right, we thank y'all for being here. We have uh, Ms. Chandra Jackson here with her consulting business. Anybody need consulting? Okay, she's the person to go to. I believe she helps nonprofits as well. All, all, everybody. Okay, all the businesses. Okay, everybody can use some consulting. Okay, and we have Jeremy. Jeremy. Okay, so you know, the, the, the business. Delicious. All right, delicious. All right, so we got delicious over here, y'all. So y'all be able to purchase some jewelry, okay? We always gotta stay fashion, uh, fashionable up, okay? Um, especially as us, us heart patients, okay? We don't like looking like heart patients, so we like to doll up sometimes, okay? Throw our lashes on and we look normal, okay? I'm, I'm telling you, a lot of times people be like, why you got a handicap? I'd be like, look, you know, you just don't know people's stories, you know. Uh, but I thank God that I haven't, I don't look like what I've been through. I've been through a lot. <laughs> so, 
Um, but okay, y'all. So we're gonna kind of take a little break. Twelve to twelve thirty was kind of our initial uh, breaking time for anybody who needs to go use the bathroom. We do have a restroom, so if anybody gotta use the restroom, we can uh, kindly guide you all there. Um, you know.